Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be filming my January through March wrap up. I've read 15 books over the three months period. It's not the best, I'm not gonna lie. There are more books that I've read that I'm gonna be including in this wrap up. I also read a lot of picture books, uh, some more aimed at like toddlers and little kids. But I really enjoy reading illustrated picture books as well. So if you want me to do a wrap up on that as well, just drop me a comment down below, let me know. So today I'll be talking briefly about the 15 books that I finished in January through March and let's start with the first book that I read. The first book that I read in January was The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. It's the first book in the series. I don't know what it's called. I guess The Winner's Curse series. We're following two main characters, Kestrel, who is a daughter of a general in this fantastical world, and Aaron, who she buys as a slave from a slave market one day. It's not a spoiler, it happens literally within like the first few chapters of the book. So basically she takes him on, they start developing some sort of a friendship and then a lot of political intrigue happens throughout the book. I then continued on to reading The Winner's Crime and The Winner's Kiss, which concludes this trilogy. I'm gonna just mention a quick spoiler because I'll be talking about the whole series. I really enjoyed this series overall. I think they were really well written, really well explored, really heavily more political than other series or many YA series. They do have a really interesting relationship between our two main characters, Kestrel and Aaron. They develop really well throughout the series. You really feel their friendship grow as well as their like intimacy and romantic relationship. I enjoyed the second book the most. This was my favorite as even a sequel almost one of my favorite sequels. There is one scene, anyone who's read it, <laughs> on the balcony, you know what I'm talking about. It's just something really, really intense and really beautiful. It's a great, great sequel. I was let down a little bit by the third book. This series used one of the tropes that I don't usually like in the media. I'm not gonna say what it is, that's not to spoil you, but I was just not very impressed. We spend most of the time it, with one of the characters that is just not their true self, I'm not gonna say anymore. But the conclusion, the last like 50 to 100 pages was satisfying. I would still recommend highly this series. The Maria Dukoski actually released a new book in this series this year. It's called The Midnight Lie. I haven't read it yet. It is on my TBR. Technically not on my TBR, but I'm gonna read it soon. So yes, um, I gave uh, The Winner's Curse 3.5 stars, I gave Winner's Crime 4 stars, and Winner's Curse, Winner's Kiss, sorry, got 3 stars, but overall really highly recommend. Then I went on to read The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. Simpson. I hope that's how you pronounce it, I'm sorry. Why did I read this? I read this as mostly an audiobook. I, I use Libby, the app Libby, I use my local library just to get audiobooks and whenever something comes up that I'm interested in I just put it on hold or I learn it straight away so the Rosie project came up and I was like you know I've heard a lot about this book why not give it a try so we're basically following the main character Don Tillman he is a genetics professor he's um, in his late 30s and he has never really found a girlfriend or really had any romantic relationships so he uh, eventually <laughs> creates this program with with his one of his friends called the Rosie Project because his friend accidentally almost not recommends to this girl Rosie to come and knock on Don's door and he thinks that she's there for his wife project and she actually isn't. <laughs> so they then go on this massive adventure. So this book is set in Australia which is really cool. I don't think I've ever read a single book set in Australia. So this was really fun. It was a really quick read. It's one of those books that you would generalize as chiclet, which I don't really like calling it that, but it's a really quick, nice, easy read. It's really fun. It's a whole trilogy, which you don't really see in standard general literary fiction anymore. It's fun. I, I would recommend it. I gave it three, three out of five stars. It was just basic down the road. I don't hate that I read it, but it's not going to be something that I remember forever. Next up I picked up Fandom by Anna Day. I don't have the book with me because one of my friends from work loaned it to me. She loaned the entire series to me because she has been raving about it non-stop. We're following our main character Violet who is a really really big fan of this one book called The Gallows Dance. It's sort of based on the Hunger Games series that we have in our world and Violet and her friends are attending Comic Con in the Olympia which is 
kind of fun because I went there last year. It's really fun. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, they somehow get transported to the world of Gallows Dance and it, I think it's quite shortly in the synopsis, so it's not a spoiler, they accidentally kill the main character of the book so Violet has to take her role and basically complete the story because that's how she thinks they can get back into their world but there's loads of things that happen in between. I didn't love the first book, I'm not going to lie. I gave it 2.25 stars out of 5. It was quite disappointing mostly because I really didn't connect with the characters. Um, there was a lot of girl hate, everything seemed a bit basic, something that being such a great narrative or such a great interesting theme wasn't explored well enough and I really wish the author had done more with it. From what I can tell, from what I've been told, is that the author was actually given this idea, she just wrote based on the idea, so it wasn't her idea in the first place, so I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm personally I would have wished that someone who is actually really passionate about it would have brought it to life, but so that's a minor, minor thing I guess. <laughs> I, I didn't love it, but I knew it was just a duology, so I was like, you know, it's not a quick read to be honest. I, I did read it in two days, but I just feel like there was a lot that I could have gotten out of it if it was just a bit better. The, f the first book ends, you know, everything is quite left on a little bit of a cliffhanger, I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to spoil it. I read this, then I took a little break until I got the second book, but between that I then read Wranglestone by Darren Charlton. This is a new release in YA, it's a an LGBTQ plus zombie apocalypse novel, if you can call it that. <sighs> What can I tell you about this? We're basically following um, two, well, our main character, Peter. He has been born into this world that um, he doesn't know anything what happened before. This whole apocalypse zombie thing happened. Well, so our zombies in this book don't actually get called zombies, they're called the restless ones. So this little area of in somewhere in deep in America, around the Lake Franklestone, so they're all set on islands. Peter and his dad and quite a few other members of the society have been living in this camp now for quite a few years. They have been trying to, basically the winter time is the worst because the lake freezes over and the restless ones can walk across and infect the main group of people. So we're following Peter when he's getting to his 1617, if I remember correctly, and he is slowly falling in love or has been in love for 11 years with this boy Cooper who is his neighbour and then basically one day Peter has to take on some extra duties that he's not really used to. One day a boat arrives at his doorstep and Peter approaches it and the gentleman in the boat says that he has good intentions but Peter doesn't really do any checks that are necessary in this world and something bad happens and then the whole story is propelled from that. We follow Peter and Cooper falling in love throughout this novel and I think it really really relied on that for the most of the storytelling which I was quite like I, I think that was probably the best part of the storytelling and yet I really really didn't enjoy this book. I, I gave this two stars as well which was quite disappointing because this was actually sent to me by the publishers by Little Tiger and it's a signed book as well like look at that how pretty I am gutted that I didn't like it but why I read it was for our book club at work. Actually when I went to speak to quite a few people about it and we all had really different experiences reading it we all find quite a few story points um, a little bit frustrating but seeing those connections to our real world and uh, examples of how certain things were reflected and the metaphors used in this to reflect certain bits. I thought that was really interesting and it really made me want to pick up the sequel because this is going to be a series and I wish, I wish this just was done a bit better. This is a debut novel as well so uh, from what all I've seen is Darren Charlton is a really sweet lovely guy. He just looks like a lumberjack. I think it's a good book if you were looking for something different in the zombie kind of style setting. I continued with something really quick. This came up on also well, as an audiobook for me. It's called The Test by Sylvain Novell. Also, am I the only person who thought Sylvain Novell was a woman? RIP. Anyway, uh, so The Test. It's a really quick, like a hundred page 
novella, let's say. I can't really tell you much about it because I've really been inspired by Emily Fox's recommendation. She really liked it. I thought I'd give it a try. It came up on my audio uh, book reservation, so I read it within a couple of hours. Now, main character is being asked to, or he's going to do a citizenship test uh, to become a UK citizen. And so he's going for this test. He's been practicing a lot and his wife and his kid are waiting outside so he enters this room and he starts doing the test and then we get perspective of the people who are do actually doing the test and then the, the comes the twist I think we all know that there's a twist so it's not a spoiler but I'm not gonna tell you anything about it I was shocked but at the same time I was a little bit like times I was a little bit confused a little bit bored uh, overall I gave it three stars the audiobook was absolutely dreadful <laughs> I would not recommend picking it up as an audiobook probably ebook if you can, I don't know if it's actually published as a physical copy, but it was really unnerving. Great, interesting look at how people would behave in a situation like that, but highly oh, just traumatizing. <laughs> Very mixed feelings. Would I recommend it? Sure, if you can get it for free or any in a different medium, please do. If not, I don't know. I would probably pass. But I've heard mixed things about his other series, Temis Files. I'm not going to be picking those up, I'm afraid. Then I continued with The Fandom Rising, which is the sequel to The Fandom by Anna Day. I have to say so, the first book, The Fandom, is quite a chunky book. I think it's around 400 pages. The sequel, Fandom Rising, is so short. Literally, it takes... It has a quite a big build-up, so it picks up right after with... Not right after, a little bit like, I think a year later, after our main story ended. I can't spoil anything for you but the main one of the characters in the first book there absolutely hated her. She was so bad. As she redeems herself and a redemption arc for me is really difficult. I don't usually trust them. I don't usually like them. I don't think they are 99% of the time actually even relevant or work for that character but in this case you know Alice, Alice came through and I Absolutely, I couldn't stop reading this book. I read it in one day. I just sat down. I was like, you know, let's get this over with. There's nothing else I need to do. And I absolutely enjoyed this to bits, even more than the first one. I don't know if had the first one been better, I would have enjoyed the second one as much as I did. But there's certain character developments and certain story arcs that happened during that really short book really really impressed me and I can't recommend this enough. If you're looking for a different kind of dystopian read which is quite similar to what we would want to experience as readers to go into one of our favorite worlds and live through it, absolutely please please go and read it. I gave uh, the second book four out of five stars. Well, and then I picked up Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This has been so hyped up in the booktube community. Oh my goodness last year everyone was either loving it or hating it. And I was really weary to pick it up. We were going to choose this as our April pick for the book club that I mentioned earlier, but I think we decided it was too similar to the Wranglestone vibes and we were just like not feeling it. So I still read it. I flew through it. So we are stuck on this island that has been quarantined and it has a private school, private girls school on it. So we meet our three main characters, but we're only here from the perspective of the two, Hetty and Wyatt and their other friend. I'm really bad with names, thank god they had a name on the back. I love this cover. This cover to me is everything and I know the original cover has a black writing but I think this pink really pops. So they have been quarantined because of this something, it's this weird thing called the tox toxicity toxic and they suddenly start developing all these girls suddenly start developing these weird things on their bodies like mutations modifications Hetty has her eye is like fully closed up and like gunged up and by it I think is it's like really strong or something I'm really bad at remembering these other things and by it something goes missing so that is the main premise of the story and I really really enjoy the dynamics in this book. I thought the characters were quite unlikable and I thought that was the point. <laughs> they were really really 
really unlikable and I really quite dislike most of what they were doing or most of their actions because their attitudes to each other were just not really helpful and not really fun and I think the way Petty went about doing quite a few things was actually quite fun and we get to see a bit of the world outside the school because the school itself all the grounds have been quarantined closed off because the woods around it were have become growing with this toxicity as well. It was weird, gut-wrenching at times. It was a little bit tough of a start. I think it took me at least a hundred and a hundred pages to get into it. But after that I just could not stop reading. And the twist, obviously there is a twist. The twist was really fun. I really really enjoyed it. I think it's probably one of the most terrifying things that I have ever learnt about in biology. And whoa. It really, really shook me to the core. It's really interesting how they developed it or how they took the inspiration, how Rory Power took the inspiration to create this kind of uh, circumstance, these kind of circumstances. I haven't read Lord of the Flies in a really long time, so at least 15 years plus. I can't tell you if it's similar in any way really. If you wanted to read it, obviously you can. Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry, I think my camera battery died, literally mid-frame. So, I was talking about... <laughs> Did I talk about it? I don't know. The rosy result? No, the rosy effect? Really boring. Would not recommend. Just literally skip it to the second book. I could just tell you what happens. But I'm not going to, but just it's just boring. Please don't pick it up, thank you. <laughs> Next audiobook that I picked up, because I was in sort of like a reading slump and I was just trying to get through it, but this clearly wasn't helping it. It's called The Rule the Night by Claire Eliza Bartlett. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. It was a very long book when nothing really happened as well. Oh my god, I read two really boring books consecutively. It was so tough to get through it. It's a fantastical world, fantastical, magical fantasy world land where I don't even know the characters, I don't even know the words. They use this magical weave to like fly around and kill things. It's very inspired by the World War II female pilots from World War II. I just I don't think it had anything going for the story. It was just so dense and then with these character relationships and you there was just these difficult character names and you just I was not invested in the story at all. And I was actually talking to one of my friends about it and it might come up in one of my videos again. <laughs> it's more of a, an idea of when should I stop reading? Is it worth me putting that extra time into it to finish it to see if I've actually read it? Or just skip the book completely so mm, I don't know uh, I give it one star I would probably not even give it a rating technically I did finish it but it's really it had nothing going for me and yeah sadly where I work probably to talk about it at some point because I'm not actually allowed to tell you where I work right now because everything that's happening in the world we have something called the book of the month initiative that happens every month four books Four different genres, a fiction, non-fiction, crime, and a kids book. So for March, I think, oh my goodness, for March we had uh, Adrian McKinty's The Chain as the crime thriller book of the month. And I was like, you know, I usually sometimes tend not to pick those up, but I wanted to read it. It sounded interesting. One of my colleagues was already reading it. She said it was just fantastic. It was really fun. So I was like, you know, I'll give it a read. But this is a psychological thriller. We're following our main character, Rachel, and the first chapter is actually Rachel's daughter getting kidnapped. And Rachel receives a phone call from these kidnappers saying that, uh, that she's now part of the chain. They have taken her daughter in exchange for money and she has to kidnap someone else's child. So then the original people who stole Rachel's children could get their child back and then people who Rachel will kidnap their kid from has to do the same. Anyway, it's a chain. It's a chain of kidnappings and it runs itself but there's obviously, you know, she has to get some money for the ransom. I thought it was going to be a bit darker than it was because obviously it has children. It's quite a sensitive topic for a lot of people but I think it was handled really well so not children really didn't get, any, didn't get hurt in the story which was really a positive thing in my opinion. 
I really enjoyed it. I think it was really well written. I really flew through it. I think I read it in one day. I was actually watching some Eurovision as well, but I couldn't watch it properly because I was so invested in this. Our main character, she, she's a bit mediocre, if I may say. She's quite resourceful, I'm not going to lie. I quite enjoyed that, but nothing really special about Rachel. Quite early on, we get uh, the perspective of someone else from the story, and I was taken aback and I was like, oh, are we meant to know? Who these people are yet or what is happening and then when the reveal happens I saw this book is divided into two sections the reveal happens and then the second part and I thought it was really well executed I was quite surprised quite shocked I really liked the reveal and the second part wasn't too bad I think it could have been maybe just maybe improved just a little bit but I I, I say I quite liked it I did I did quite enjoy it. It's not one of those books that I'm going to be thinking about a lot, it's, but it's one of those stories that while I was reading I was like, this could only happen in America. I'm really sorry, but literally it could only happen in America. Anywhere else this would not fly. I would highly recommend, if you're looking for a different kind of thriller, um, I haven't read many thrillers personally, so to me it was quite unique, quite interesting. I gave it 3.75 stars, so I rounded it up to 4, but yeah, I recommend it. And then I picked up another audiobook, it's the Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco. I didn't know what to really expect from it. I've heard mixed things on YouTube regarding the series. I don't usually like to read historical fiction, or even historical YA, that's what it is. I was quite pleasantly surprised, I really really enjoyed it. The audiobook was really fun, it was a quick read. Our main character is basically trying to... she lives in Victorian London during the Jack Ripper murders and she's trying to figure out because she wants to also be like a doctor. But her family obviously that during that time women couldn't really be anything so she sneaks into her uh, uncle's studies and she meets this one cool boy and they have this chemistry and it's a really fun adventure story and I think the reveal was really interesting because I really would, I didn't know who to expect to be the Jack the Ripper but it's really fun. I would continue the series if I had more audiobooks. I don't know if I'll be going out of my way to read it, but I gave it uh, 3.5 out of 5 stars, so I, th I consider it quite a good read. Yeah, it seems like March is not my uh, very good reading month. I read three books. <laughs> the next book I picked up was also an audiobook. It has been coming in and out of my borrowed list for a while. It's Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I obviously expected to like it because every single human being that I know who has read this book has absolutely adored this story and I DNF'd it. I DNF'd it at 60%. I just couldn't read this at all. It was not funny to me. It was so devastating because this is a great premise. In 1700s England we're following Henry Monty Montague and his friend Percy and they're going on like a gap year before Monty has to become an heir to his family fortune. They take his sister, they're traveling with her to take her to university in Italy and then something happens in Paris and this whole thing turns into rather than a road trip book that I was promised by all the synopses, I got this goose chase. Monty was not funny, I am so sorry. There's nothing funny about that boy. I, I love the, the representation. Percy, sweet child, wanty, bi character, absolutely fantastic. The LGBTQ themes, absolutely loving them in this story. But there was nothing holding me interested in it. The part the, of the discovering the world around them just felt really, really shallow. And I really, really did want to keep reading. I finished, I read 60% of it and I said to myself, if I keep reading this, I really am going to hate it even more than anything I've ever read anything else. I don't even remember any details from this book because it's so unmemorable to me. It, it really pains me to say it because I feel like I'm going to become sort of an enemy to a lot of people, but it just, maybe just wasn't a book for me. And I gave it... What did I give it? I give it one star. I don't even know if I can give it a one star. I, I personally do not recommend it, but it's just my opinion, so take it with a pinch of salt. Because a lot of people do like it. And the last book I read in March, woohoo, came to the end of this wrap up, <laughs> was uh, I don't have the book either. I read it as an ebook. It's called Rules for Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson in 
America, I think it's actually called Eight Perfect Murders, which mm, I don't know if I like that title better. As a person of said career as well, I'm not gonna mention it in this video because I'm not allowed to. I found it a really really interesting read. Our main character Malcolm is a bookseller in this old bookshop that sells crime and mystery novels and he one day, back in the day, he published a blog post about his perfect murders, eight to be specific. Our main character then gets a call from an FBI agent saying that someone is following this list for actually killing people or she has, at least she has a feeling about it. I was obviously very much intrigued by this narrative. Um, it spoils, really hardly it spoils the eight crimes done in those eight books. I don't really care about spoilers, I will most of the time I'll forget them or they won't really impact my enjoyment level because we live in a world where anything is a spoiler these days. I quite enjoyed the read. It wasn't perfect, I'm not going to lie. It was at times just maybe a bit slow moving. I was always captivated but there was just a little bit something, maybe sometimes just missing that I wasn't picking it up as often as I wanted to. I think the reveal for me happened really quickly in the story. It was almost like we were going, we were going, you know, we were plowing through it and suddenly the real reveal happened and everything kind of just really came together and it was only like 20 pages from the end. I felt that there was more story coming, or sort of development happening. I think it was a good reveal, I was not, I didn't see it coming. I was expecting some sort of a different reel and also I was spoiled for this book because I watched Books and Lala's video where she talked about it, she read it, I actually picked it up on her recommendation but I completely forgot what was happened. Good. Good that I do remember the spoilers because I really really enjoyed this reading experience. I gave it four stars. It's a solid book. Uh, I don't know, I haven't read any other Peter Swanson's read uh, books. I don't usually pick up crime or thrillers. It's something a little bit different for me. These days I don't even know what I really read anymore, but we'll find out about them at some point. And this is it. This is a conclusion to my first ever wrap up. Tell me, tell me how did I do? <laughs> tell me what you read. Say hi downstairs in the comments and I would love to see you again on my channel. This is a bye for me now.